so myself bhave sodi working as an assistant professor in ganpat university so before we start the session i just giving you the brief introduction about today's experts so one thing which is a very a common for the student is our alumni students okay, in the 2004 bodang sir is pass out from this same college okay so this is a one thing that is he is our alumni student and uh, after that he joined the uh, boss company for the two years okay? and then uh, after from last 14 years uh, he is uh, joining this nxp semiconductor bangalore and he has a very broad knowledge about this area and nowadays the uh, industries and most of the technologies are switching over to the iot so you can just uh, understand so many important uh, concept related to the iot Okay, and uh, if you have any question, you just note down. Okay, at last we will uh, arrange uh, some question answer session. So without wasting much time, I'm that now directly hand over the session to the Kumaran sir. Okay, so Kumaran sir, now you can just start the session. Uh, thank you, Bhavesh sir. And uh, yes, uh, so our today's session is on hardware-based IoT security. so we will try to cover what is security why we need security how we do security and how does hardware come into picture for that part uh, yeah this is one of the projects that i worked uh, a year back uh, and then we released into the market so uh, since it's available in market it also makes uh, quite easy for me uh, to share some of the information which would have generally been confidential or trade secret but now since this product is available in market so uh, and available on let's say nxp.com so i would still see the, the the students can actually access the same references same examples that that uh, i'm trying to cover uh, uh, and play with uh, the same thing and and get uh, uh, get the feel of it yeah the, the real feel of uh, the devices the, the equipment uh, the software the stack and everything mm. if you have some questions uh, over the course of the session yeah just just type it in uh, i will try to monitor uh, the 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 chat stream and towards the end we will try to see uh, the questions it is very much possible that uh, as a part of this flow most of the questions would already get answered if not we will try to go into detail uh, later on i'll still have try to to see that this is a uh, a glimpse of the session and not an in-depth uh, one hour is is not enough to go into all the details uh, but still i would try to do enough justice so that i can scratch the uh, the iceberg and, and then it it's up to you to go to the depth of it you can contact me later uh, if any queries or questions you you face in in future re regarding the same domain yeah uh, so as sir mentioned yeah i was part of the, the the same college same campus i mean it's it's a pity that that you are not able to to visit the, the same beautiful campus now but uh, all my expertise or all my uh, uh, presence that, that you see where i am i am right now it's it's all due to hard work uh, by all the professors uh, their motivation their guidance yeah all the infrastructure that was given to us and i wish the same uh, to you also yeah i mean it, it's a really nice uh, campus and the nice uh, one of the best premier institutes that that, that uh, i have seen and then uh, i i can share my experience that with other colleagues uh, that i have worked with uh, the, the 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 nature of of uh, comfort the uh, the yeah uh, the professors that we have it it's really i mean uh, uh, one of the best uh, out there in the industry yeah so take all the the help that you get from uh, our professors and and then uh, yeah improve your positioning in, in into the world yeah like that and then alumni is already available uh, to you uh, to to do anything better in, in that direction uh, to help you yeah like that yeah i have worked on various domains as i mentioned it's, it's right now currently i am working on ultra wideband secure ranging and other use cases uh, in the past i had worked with iot security which we are covering right now and nfc readers and open controllers uh, nfc cards near field communication these are your uh, 
uh, uh, if, if if you have credit cards, then it's very much possible that that yeah, uh, 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 at least some part of it would have touched uh, uh, some of the code that I have written in in the past. Yeah, I worked with car multimedia systems. So if if you have an Audi or or uh, BMW, it's it's very much possible that some of my code is working in your car. So that way, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move to the uh, session. So this is just the standard disclaimer that, that yeah, this opinion this is from me, not not from my current or past employers. Yeah. So let's move on. So yeah, so the foremost question: Why why do we need security? Yeah, like that. Yeah. So I mean, how many of you have seen this this movie? Yeah, Ocean's Eleven. I believe uh, quite a good of uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, large uh, yeah section of a few would have seen this right correct yeah like that yeah but then I mean can can you imagine what 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 is common between uh, yeah the uh, the movie Ocean's Eleven and an aquarium yeah like that I mean I mean can you guess what 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 it would be uh, between them, uh, a common theme between them. Yeah, so in one of the casinos, yeah, uh, people hacked. Uh, so there was an aquarium which was actually a smart aquarium. Yeah, I mean, you can remotely control uh, uh, the lights, uh, the, the flow of uh, air into this aquarium uh, remotely over the same network. And people actually hacked into the, the Wi Fi. Uh, passwords from that controller. Now, the moment you know the Wi-Fi password of this one, actually all the communication that happens on that network is accessible to you. Yeah, yeah that's how uh, that's how vulnerable Wi-Fi is. I mean, if if you know the Wi-Fi password, you practically can monitor. I mean, there have been cases in the past uh, long back uh, where people who use Gmail on um, air airport. Uh, their actual accounts got hacked for for one week. Yeah, I mean the the cookies that are shared, they have a lifetime of one week, and and just because you used an open network, your cookies were actually shared in open. People could monitor this, and they can have access to your Gmail fully for one week. I mean, now you think that that what 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 problem does it have? Because if somebody has your Gmail account for one week, and I mean, it, it's pretty much simple. I mean, if I can send email on your behalf to your bank, say that I have lost my credit card or I have lost my wife's credit card or this one, and these are all my details, my birth date, uh, I'm sending from the official email ID, so just reset my password or do something. Yeah, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, I mean, you can imagine, yeah, uh, that, that it, it's it's it's. It's it's not nice that that somebody hacks into this, and then this is a casino. So, so since this is a casino, then people can monitor how much, yeah, uh, the ran random numbers are generated by the slotting machines and all those things, all the patterns. Yeah, you can actually try to uh, get this information, and you can hack into the devices. Yeah. Uh, let's move to the next slide. Sorry, I'll, I'll move to this one. Yeah. Now, how many of you have heard of Stuxnet? Yeah, yeah. So, Stuxnet was uh, one of the most premier hacks in, in the, the world, sophisticated level hacks that that was seen. Some of the PLC controllers that are used in nuclear reactors got actually. I would not say that they, they got hacked. But there was a worm available on, on 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 internet. It was spreading, and it was designed in such a way that it would attack a particular set of PLC controllers. Now, these PLC controllers were used in Iranian nuclear program, deployed by uh, Russia. Yeah, uh, people believe that that this this virus originated in Israel and USA, but there is no proof of it. But I mean. Yeah, that's how uh, it's like that. That remotely people can control that nuclear reactor, and then uh, you can have a new Chernobyl uh, in into your uh, backyard. Yeah, but on the same um, line, yeah. Uh, you, now the smart bulbs are available. Where using your mobile phone, you can control the hue, uh, whether you want uh, a white, yellow, or blue tone of your bulb. You want less or high brightness. You can control everything from your mobile phone. Yeah. 
and you you can go through this link yeah i mean the the vulnerability has been solved now but i mean that's the the point i mean your 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 iot devices your smart devices are are not safe yeah i mean uh, the moment there is a software the moment there is a security there are people motivated enough to hack into into this this part yeah yeah like that yeah you, you see this right yeah that way yeah yeah so yeah you can imagine yeah that uh, uh, yeah i mean if 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 uh, this this iot device is, if there is something smart then yeah it is dumb enough to get hacked yeah that kind of thing yeah i mean uh, surveillance cameras is it's a huge uh, market nowadays yeah and then if they get hacked it's also a problem yeah i, I would move to the next slide yeah so now now let's look at yeah i mean we, we just wanted to cover why we need security because i just wanted to give you a glimpse and then then what exactly is security yeah then security is, is is i would say the pillars of security are 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 falling into this this five aspects in broad uh, consideration so one thing you may think yeah confidential right it's a secure it's secret right nobody knows yeah? nobody else should know this that's what what you would think it's it's secure yeah but there are other aspects also to to security i mean one of this is integrity yeah that that i mean it's 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 not indeed supposed to be secret i mean anybody should be able to to check it anybody else should be able to verify it but just you need to have a confidence that nobody modified it i mean your electronic voting machines is is a clear example of this that that nobody else should be able to modify the count of of this yeah uh, the, the voting count as long as you can keep that yeah integrate uh, you can maintain the integrity of that part whatever the email messages the signatures of of the emails like that yeah i mean then authenticity you, you you really need to say that it is really really coming from that person i mean uh, you might have heard of of crc cyclic redundancy check and then that kind of things yeah so yeah th those gives integrity but they do not give you authenticity to, to really prove that that this is the place from where where this is originating so i mean electronic passports is is one of the 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 examples for this authenticity that you need to be really really sure that this passport was issued by government of india or government of uh, yeah um, actually pakistan also has electronic passports yeah so so which government is is issuing these passports yeah I like that the same thing you need availability that that uh, uh, yeah you, you can think about the the other database backend that you have it it needs to be available i mean just just because your your system went down you do not have a backup of, of that system uh, then even if you have yeah <clears throat> sorry just a minute yeah <clears throat> Uh, all the security behind this other database and all those things but if somebody is able to take it down then yeah all this database of, of all the fingerprint information biometric information that is collected is of no use it it needs to be available to uh, all the stakeholders when they need it and in in the format they need it then one of the the aspects is the the non repudiation so i mean here the aspect is that not no secure system should be able to 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 fake this particular challenge yeah that, that you should not avoid that i have no idea how it have it happened i mean uh, example if if uh, uh, yeah if if a system authenticated it then you should be able to go back and ask that are you really the one who authenticated it or somebody else authenticated it uh, so this is an example of of cloning of the devices so so if i have a, 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 a device which is yeah uh i i mean you can see that the fake iphones yeah i mean if if uh, uh, the company in, in china let's say foxconn manufactured your iphones uh, who stops uh, foxconn from manufacturing rather than 10000 to 100000 devices or 200000 devices and, and start selling those devices right so practically there should be a system in place that that would say that i have actually authenticated or or verified uh, 1000 iphones or 10000 iphones today and that's it not a one more not one less that kind of things 
yeah like that so uh, actually uh, <clears throat> on market what we call is hsm hardware security modules so these devices actually can be programmed to to set that only authenticate 1000 devices today or 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 it, it's just very much like your e electronic voting machine that, that there should be an operator who who allows to 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 cast one more ballot one more vote and then that's it you cannot keep on pressing the buttons until unless the operator does not allow to allow one more uh, button uh, and in the same sense this hardware security modules are designed in such a way that that once you program it that that thousand devices should be configured and programmed not one more not one less kind of thing yeah so now some of the challenges that that security has and it's it's quite real i mean i would not read out through the full slide uh, but i mean there are multiple challenges uh, challenges i mean there is one thing called side channel attack and, and uh, there is an example that 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 on an average uh, listen to me carefully yeah so on an average uh, the pentagon orders five large pizzas on a single day or single working day that's that's it yeah they, they order five large pizzas on a single day once in a while they order 30 large pizzas the moment they order 30 large pizzas all the media houses yeah they directly reach uh, the gates of pentagon and try to monitor and then ask the the uh, the people there what happened overnight i mean why did you suddenly order 30 large pizzas i mean you also order this many large pizzas because yeah people were yeah a huge delegation was suddenly asked to stay in in in, in pentagon office and monitor some some crucial event yeah like that i mean just because you ordered pizza people now have an idea that something conspired in the in the walls of the pentagon yeah like that this is what side channel attack is i mean nobody uh, leaked this information that, that we are going to bomb uh, iran or iraq or that kind of thing nothing yeah somalia nothing nobody leaked this information but just because uh yeah a large order of pizza went out yeah and, and and because of that people now have an idea that something happened in the in the walls of, of pentagon yeah so so like this yeah so these kind of things i mean over a period of time you can build up a profile there are there are physical attacks uh, on on the ic's i mean you can monitor uh all the data that is read uh, through your hard disk. I mean, even if your hard disk which is encrypted, and even if your hard disks have some some kind of mechanisms to 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 cope up with this, you just make a digital clone of that that hard disk. Yeah, just read all the sectors out of that hard disk, and then you can decrypt it. You, you, given you have motivation to do that, you can actually decrypt it, and then then understand what is what is happening. Yeah, I mean, you you might have gone through the, the typical case that. FBI wanted to get an access to the the, the phone of, of one of the terrorists of iPhone and, and uh, Apple did not agree to that, that I will not allow, uh, Apple would not facilitate decryption of that phone. But I mean, if given the motivation, yeah, uh, people would decrypt it, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it, it, it's very much possible. It's just the, the, the question is, what motivation or what, what resources the other party has? It will take years or, or weeks or days or months, whatever it is, but but given time and enough resources, you can do everything that you want. And all it's about that, that how much, what you can do to, to reduce that particular time. Yeah. I mean, with this site channel RX, uh, if you have a password of, let's say, 10 digits, yeah, if, for the 10 digits, it will be permutation of, of 10 entries yeah but but if with different power analysis i mean the first digit you can compare within those microseconds <clears throat> 10 tries so practically within 100 tries you can know what the password is like that or other than um yeah millions and millions of, of devices yeah that way yeah like that now yeah <clears throat> let's uh, go off topic i mean security is also something like this yeah like that if i mean you might have seen that that yeah this is how you are supposed to wear the mask yeah but but people wear like this they don't cover the noses they don't cover their mouth it's the same tool yeah just because you are using the mask it does not mean that you are secure and security is just practically like this 
just because you are using the latest algorithm, the way you use it, it, it it's very much important. And then you need security consultants to really ascertain and then prove that, that you are really, really doing it the way security is supposed to be done like that. Yeah, just because you are using the right tool does not mean you are secure. I mean, yeah, you might have heard that that <clears throat> AES is very secure. I mean, just because you use does not mean that it that, that, that it's the most secure. Yeah, like that. That that's the way it is. Yeah. And then sometimes the problem is like this. Yeah. I mean, how many of you are using masks like this? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Mm, yeah, people, if you are using this mask, maybe you can raise your hand. But uh, I mean, you are not supposed to use this mask. The point is, these masks are actually ventilator masks. They were used in the past so that uh, the the dust particles don't enter your body. But other way around, it still facilitates or simplifies your breathing. Yeah, I mean, if you are working as a woodcutter or that kind of thing, or or a paint job, that kind of thing, you may use it. But but not not for COVID. Yeah, uh, practically. When you sneeze out, everything goes out. So <clears throat> security is also sometimes like that. You think that it is secure. Maybe you you read some internet article that is good enough, but it's not actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, more and more researchers are able to find out vulnerabilities into the system, and because of various uh, 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 complications, I mean, <clears throat> the information is not made public. Uh, there is something called CVE. It's called Common Vulnerability Database. Yeah. Uh, identifier and uh, yeah now you, you can go through the, the that database to, to see that what what hardware what software what what is uh, hacked and 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 how how difficult or how easy it is to hack that that kind of thing so uh, security is 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 also uh, yeah the aspect i mean uh, nowadays i mean industry is thinking about to put one more profile in in the cxo term called ciso um, uh, yeah, the central information security officer. Yeah, just like you have a CFO or CEO or security lead. Either, yeah, either, yeah. Uh, okay. So, any questions so far, uh, audience? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So, let's see some some brief history of of security. Yeah, like that. On one hand, the, the first ever example of security is, is, is like this, the, the cycle. Yeah, it was used, uh, yeah, uh, like this, yeah. I mean, you, you, you take a roll, a roll and then, <clears throat> yeah. You just, just need to know that how many grooves this, this role has, yeah. And that, I mean, this is the message that you want to send that I am hurt very badly, please help. Yeah, but this is the, the message that is transmitted after unwinding and then yeah, whether you have to roll for four times or five times or six or seven. Yeah, it is. It, that's the shared secret between the two entities. So the same thing is then uh, a Caesar cipher cipher. Yeah, where it was just a substitution cipher. You want to send attack at once, but yeah, this is what you are transmitting um, like that. Yeah, you just, just see that how many steps you are transmitting, yeah? Uh, Julius Caesar used to use this, yeah, that way, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> earlier adaptations, I mean, but but one thing is common, military is, is the key aspect, which is interested in all the security. Uh, you might have heard of Enigma machine, yeah, like that, used in World War II, <clears throat> and this is how you hack it, yeah? Uh, Alan Turing's British Bombay. Yeah, and then yeah, <clears throat> this came into picture. DES data encryption standard. Yeah, and this is how you hack it. I mean, now you take a, a single working day. Yeah, but yes, good. Yes, imitation game. You might have seen that. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean now FPG arrays are available that, that you can use this. I mean, in in nineteen seventy seven. People were saying that you can use it for all the official purposes. Uh, IBM designed it, uh, NSA approved it, and now it's no longer supposed to be used. I mean, you need, <clears throat> or if you use it, you need to have a real, real good reason why you are using it. Yeah, but but else uh, it, it's quite easy to to crack. I mean, there are companies there they are selling these devices to, to crack it, like that. 
Yeah, I will not go into all the other details. It, it's, it's too deep. What cryptography algorithms we get and, and what, what security we have. Yeah, Let, let's look at the landscape of, of cryptography. Yeah. Before we look into landscape of cryptography, uh, yeah, we will we will look at uh, the convention that is used uh, these days. I mean, yeah, instead of using a message like this that A wants to send a message to B and E is eavesdropping and like that, it, it, it's not too easy to reach with A, B, C, D, E. So, <clears throat> if you read any other documentation of, of of cryptography, you will you will meet Alice, you will meet Bob. You will meet Eva, and there are many such such characters into the uh, the conversation. But but like that. So so Alice and Bob are, are the stream that Alice wants to send a message to Bob like that. Yeah, that, that's uh, the convention. Yeah, that, that's why we are using it. Alice and Bob. <clears throat> so let's see uh, <clears throat> what different types of cryptography we have. So one is symmetric cryptography. When symmetric means both the parties have exactly the same thing. I mean, it, it's it's like your password. You also know the password. Your server, your, your, your Google also knows your password. Like that, it's a common shared secret, right? What you type in, uh, that guy also knows it, like that. <clears throat> but yeah, in, in security, you don't store the password as it. You hash it and then like that. But, but yeah, it's just for your reference. But the point is, it's common. Yeah, like that. It's common between both of them, like that. Yeah. So practically. You have some string, you combine it with this secure key that you have, and you get something, some 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 garbage out. I mean, it, it's not readable, you don't know it. And then <clears throat> you give it, using the same key, you can encrypt and you can decrypt. So that is what symmetric cryptography is. The example is AES, this, and all those things like that. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, the advantage is that this is actually fast. It is implemented in hardware. We'll see later at the secure element when it comes into picture. Yeah. The disadvantage is, is that both of them know actually the same thing. I mean, you have to share this and, and yeah. What if Bob and Alice are not the only people on earth? Yeah, like that. I mean, just if, if there are, yeah. Alice, Bob, Frodo, Debbie, you need 15 keys just because this entities. And, and I mean, imagine you want to share something secret between even a class of 40 or even a company of, of 4,000 employees, something secure across it will be, it will be an humongous task to maintain all the secure keys. Yeah, because you actually need to maintain secure between both of them, because if the secure key, this, this is, is common, it, it's leaked, you have no idea who leaked it. Yeah. Like that. So, so practically, if there is a common between Alice and Debbie, then if it's got leaked, then either Alice or Debbie, one of them leaked it. And then all you do is that you you revoke that key, and then you come up with a new secret keys, and then uh, that's how you re-establish the security. That's the term what we call it key rotation. Yeah, like that you 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 set a new new key between both of them. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Then. In, in the symmetric tree, there is something called yeah, block cipher and stream cipher. I mean, it's, it's it's a use case. I mean, I, there is no black and white answer that you should always use stream cipher or you should always use block cipher. Uh, the point is, imagine yeah, this is a pretty, yeah, a picture is worth a thousand words. I mean, if if you had used a, a block cipher on this image, this is how it, it comes out. Yeah, you, you know that it looks like penguin. If you use a stream cipher, this is how it is. But the point is, if something uh, part of this this stream is lost, you can no, no longer decrypt it, right? So, so the question is whether a part of this information is crucial to you to recover eventually, even in in future. Whether you really really want to do that, or more like that. So, imagine you are encrypting some content which is of two gigabytes. You practically have to transfer two gigabyte, gigabytes every time, <clears throat> and if you're link is not stable it's it's not good enough then you will never be able to decrypt it and and uh, i mean you, you saw the pillars of of security right one of the key pillars is availability that, that you should be able to do it every time that you want like that yeah <clears throat> just because your network is is under some kind of attack that that it, it comes down quite quite often i mean you, you can see your your 
uh, when link comes down or, or or that kind of thing yeah no you will never not be able to decrypt it you will have to restart it again and again like that and that that's actually uh, yeah that that's what we call denial of service attack dos that system is available but but it, it's denial right so you, if you can take the system to to that level you also have compromised security i mean imagine passport verification that that it does not happen locally or other verification that that does not happen locally on a device but has to connect to a cloud and and just because you are able to attack the system all you have to do is that yeah since since there is no online verification available you have to compare the face of that person and the other card and you have to let that person go you cannot keep uh, thousands of people just waiting for the system to come online yeah I imagine uh, on airport security that, that you just have to wait uh, for thousands of people yeah like that yeah uh, the next concept that that comes into picture is, is this asymmetric so so in in the symmetric both of them had the public part and now there is a public and private part these two the public part and the private part is, is different but they are related yeah <coughs> and there yeah uh, yeah you, you can combine the keys and then you can get a shared secret so <clears throat> yeah if, if alice wants to get alice will use alice's private key but the public key of the counterpart and and vice versa and and using both of them you can get a shared secret <clears throat> there is mathematics behind it uh, using rsa you can do it using elliptic curve cryptography you can do it yeah uh, i'll not go into that details yet yeah but in a nutshell it, it's like this i mean it, it it's you can see that it it's 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 like color mixture yeah that, that you, you start with yellow yeah this is a common starting point yeah and then yeah <clears throat> these are the secret colors yeah so you, you got the yellow and red mix it, it looks a brownish color comes you transport on the public way on the other side and practically you are mixing this this colors yeah uh, so bob is mixing using his own private uh, the private color of bob never goes to alice it, it never goes and the private color of alice this red color never goes to the bob but still they are able to come to a common secret uh, so in rsa it is it's it's done using exponents yeah and uh, yeah in elliptic of cryptography it, it's also a mathematical uh, process uh, i would suggest that that you you google that part uh, this this diffie hellman uh, key exchange and and like that and and there are really nice youtube videos which explains this yeah i mean uh, within one hour i will not be able to uh, yeah cover the, the, this part but I, i can share the links later on yeah like that yeah like that yeah <clears throat> so no uh, that was asymmetric cryptography hash is also important i mean what what actually is an hash yeah it's 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 one way function i mean you 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 give some input when you hash it you, you get a digest yeah and this digest is is very much random yeah the size of this this digest is is, is fixed uh we have uh, earlier we had the md5 hash uh, which is quite easy to 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 crack i mean to get the collision it is quite easy and then yeah nobody recommends to use it uh then there is a sha secure hash algorithm the sha1 yeah uh, then right now uh, quite popular is sha3 secure secure hash algorithm 3 like that yeah but this is how it, it works yeah you get an input you you feed into that hash and you get a digest back and practically you can verify uh, the same thing yeah uh, that, that this actually can give you the integrity of the message that it never got modified yeah uh, Uh, this hash and <clears throat> uh there is mac method message authenticity yeah it's where you can also get an authenticity of the message that this is really authentic that it 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 really did not get get modified yeah so you get message there is a mac algorithm mm, you use something that we call it n ones yeah and and counters yeah uh and and uh, you never repeat these numbers yeah like that uh, so using that you can actually ensure that this this never got modified i mean 
uh, hash has a problem that that uh, yeah you you just uh, say that you want to send fox again i mean you just see that this message was sent in the past um, maybe yesterday maybe a year back maybe two years back or maybe five minutes back you just retransmit the same message which was not supposed to be sent yeah but as long as the digest matches your counterpart entity would say that yes this is an authentic message but with <clears throat> this mac algorithms and all those things what you do is that you, you actually add a counter that when you send this message you put the counter one yeah that that one the next message that you send you are never going to use one you may use two three four or any number afterwards yeah you combine that 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 number so practically what it means that you are avoiding the replay attack you cannot send send the same message again like that yeah that way so that's that's what uh, this message authenticated codes are for yeah uh, this is important i mean <clears throat> one clear example is uh, it is it's one of the use cases authenticity of your certificate your degree certificate or your mark sheet yeah i mean practically i see your uh, roll number i see your marks uh, the certificate is, 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 is your mark sheet is, is public information right there is no security in that i just want to confirm that your mark sheet is genuine you did not modify even a single mark of that mark sheet right all i have to do is send the same information back to that server uh, with with one particular number and then it it, it it sends the same data back like that yeah and <clears throat> these systems actually use these counters yeah so practically if i want to revalidate this particular mark sheet i have to use a new number uh, incremental number and then get 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 this validated like that so practically avoiding replay attacks like that this uh, counters and this this n ones yeah that, that you are only going to use that number once like that yeah I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, there are other use cases of these these numbers, yeah, these n ones and all those things. I mean, there was a a pretty uh, easy hack that that was used uh, in in uh, yeah these vehicles, yeah, uh, uh, the fleet operators in, in in your bus, right? When you're traveling through a bus, uh, and then you you can say that I have forgotten my ID card or I have forgotten my my card. Uh, this one you just have to 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 listen to two or three employees in front of you who, who are giving their employee id that this is my employee id you just increment your employee id by one whatever you listen and then you say that my employee id of is this one and i'm from this company and practically <clears throat> that person more, more or less the conductor would actually allow you to to pass through you know, the security gate or, or any other place you just incremented the employee id uh, from the from the the person that you heard and to avoid this problem most of the places the employee id the employee numbers they are not incremented sequentially i mean they are incremented by two three randomly but the point is clear that you just cannot have a pattern that if i heard one employee id I can actually fake the next employee ID. It is very much possible that you use that number and your security guys can say that, no, there is no person with that employee ID in this company like that, that kind of thing. Yeah, that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, again, I would not uh, uh, read it uh, through this, this slide, but these are the different uh, algorithms or just, just the brief overview of, of uh, different hash and, and uh, this algorithms or Mac uh, symmetric and asynchromatic cryptographies yeah like that yeah uh, i saw there was one question object referencing uh, yeah uh, no uh, so actually what you said this object referencing uh, bashit yeah no this is not actually those object referencing or hash this is actually security i mean this is actually a distributed system i mean uh, imagine we are talking about uh, b b yeah Aadhaar card for all the b b b b yeah uh, people residing in India. I would not say citizens of India. Even if you are foreign national, if you are staying in India for more than three months, you can get an Aadhaar card. But yeah, this is a distributed system, so it's an authenticity of all this, 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 uh, all these numbers and the data there, that kind of things. Yeah, that I will go through. <clears throat> yeah, the next part. I mean. Yeah, we, we saw all these algorithms here. Yeah, like that. Uh, let me 
Tuck, pointer options, laser pointer. Yeah, all the symmetric algorithms. I mean, in the symmetric keys, all the things. Practically all these are the keys and they are random numbers. And, and this is a really nice little bit commit comic. Yeah. That yeah, a random number generator, which is just generating nine, 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 nine. I mean, is it random? And and that's the point. I mean, you never know. You can never be sure what, what actually is random and, and practically you you flip the bit. Um yeah, you 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 don't know what actually happened like that. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah. And that's the problem with all these these things. Yeah, I mean, we need to solve this problem also. Uh, whether whatever uh, domain we are using, whether we are using symmetric, but whatever information we are sharing, we are all, all only sharing large random numbers. That's it. Yeah, and then yeah, it, it's quite difficult to to verify those random numbers. Generally, what we do is that when we are sharing this information, we try to hash it and try to compare this hash. But it's still you have to compare five twelve bits or. 256 bits and then that that's also uh, yeah, problematic and yeah the next slide i mean yeah i i am hopeful that that we have fans of big bang theory here yeah this is the the dialogue i mean and then and actually that's the the challenge in cryptography i mean what happened in the beginning on on, on the, the first how did alice and bob share their keys the first time I mean, initial sharing. I mean, if if there was some man in the middle attack happening, you, you would never notice. Yeah, I mean, uh, Eve was eavesdropping that information, and Alice and Bob would never know. Eve would always stay in between. I mean, it is practically possible that to hack the Wi-Fi routers that that you have. I mean, yeah, you you monitor, and that Wi-Fi router is 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 channeling. All the transactions that you are doing uh, to to actually a proxy server, and you would never notice that there's something like this is happening, and that's what HTTPS is about. Uh, and practically, HTTP, your hypertext transfer protocol is designed for this 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 actually man in the middle. There are players play, players in between. There's a router, there's a gateway, there's a switch, and everybody can 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 buffer the information, retransmit and relay the information, and um, yeah. Practically, they can store the same information for ages and years, years together. Uh, the only point is whether do you, are you motivated to do that? Yeah, like that. I mean, imagine your passport office, yeah, passport seva kendra. If if the, the Wi-Fi machine there is hacked, or even if a bank, yeah, if if the, I mean, people were actually hacking the uh, the USB keyboard. They they put a device between the keyboard and the uh, on the USB and just just monitor the keyboard clicks, and yeah, I mean, you within a day or two, you you know the password, right? Because somebody entered that data into that keyboard, right? That is the physical uh, attack, yeah, like that. So yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. But uh, yeah, let's let's see that that yeah. Uh, how do we solve this problem? So practically, we solve this this with something called yeah chain of trust. So there is always a root CA uh, certificate authority that you always trust. And yeah, there is an X509 V3 or uh, the, the different versions of it, but but practically this is quite unique or quite popular. Yeah, a, a certificate. Yeah, there is a version number of the certificate, serial number, and there are many information of of the certificate. I mean, um, you can see uh, your browser. Uh, there is a key there. Yeah, or you can select that and then see that uh, there is a. Yeah, this site is certified by this guy, and he's certified by this guy. That kind of thing. So I mean, uh, Google is certified, Bing is certified, UVPC, our website, is also certified. Yeah, like that. So this is the the root of trust, like that. Yeah. So practically, we trust UVPC, but yeah, why? Because R3 actually trusts UVPC, and then we we trust R3 because actually we trust this DST. I mean, uh, this root CA, they are actually pre-installed in your operating system in your mobile phone and all those things so i mean open your mobile phone and, and then you can check the 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 the, the cas certificate authorities you can install your own uh, certificate authority if you want uh, like that and then become your own inter entity but i mean these companies like this uh, yeah dg cert uh, this is actually coming from directly um, yeah uh, microsoft or this is coming from google but there are other third party vendors like komodo and other companies they actually do this for you i mean you take your uh, certificate your your uh, uh, keys to to them 
uh, whether it's symmetric or asymmetric and ask them to sign it on your behalf. They just charge money, of course, for this, but that money is, is, is for the guarantee that, that practically they are keeping these root CS secure. In, in some cases, these root CS are not even on internet, that the private keys, they are offline. They can never be accessed. Everything is manual and that actually charges uh, for more money. Yeah, like that. Uh, they, they call it key ceremony like that. Plus, there is a um, convention also that, that you actually select why we are signing this, this certificate like that. Yeah, that kind of thing. That way. Yeah, so this kind of thing. So practically using this certificate, you now have an access to whether there is a symmetric key or the public key or whatever the information that is coming, the signed, and that's how you, you can start trusting this information. So, so you, 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 you trust it in the public key and then you use it for encryption and all those things like that. Yeah, that way. The, the certificate sharing is, is, is quite uh, important and an uh, integral part of all the security that is there. Plus the certificates have their expiry dates so that you, you you use it only for a year. So practically after the year, they, they automatically expire like that. Yeah, like that. So now we will move to the the, the next part of the session where I'll try to, to brief on, on the, uh, the SC051, SC050, A7 and CH, yeah, the, the plug and trust family, the, the product that I worked on, yeah, uh, where actually it it actually meets or, or it's designed for all the security aspects and these parts, yeah, like that. I just copy pasted directly and uh, this is a uh, from uh, the brochure, the product brochure that we have from my device uh, from this one. Yeah, <clears throat> like that. so. So practically, uh, yeah, uh, there are other players also in market. Yeah, uh, to, to actually do the same thing. There is Atmel. Yeah, uh, there's an XP Infineon also does the same thing. Yeah, but we just try to, to ensure this, this hardware. Uh, yeah, uh, plays this part uh, for the security. Yeah. And this is how we do it. So this is the, the hardware part of the security. So practically you get an IC as simple as one, two, three. Yeah. You get this IC, you put it, just, just put it this device on your IOT device. Yeah. And on, on that device, when you purchase this device, you get a device unique identifier from this one. Yeah. This ID, you just enroll this particular device that this is the unique ID. Corresponding to this, this device, I mean, we saw the X509 certificate there. Yeah. So corresponding to this device ID, there is a unique certificate already on, on that device uh, signed by that. That's it. As long as you know this number, you have the full trust established to that like that. So practically this, this allows you to actually enroll a, a million devices. I mean, <clears throat> there are different use cases. I mean, uh, iPhone is a good example for this part. So iPhone has this, this uh, uh, the accessories, uh, they are actually genuine authenticated accessories. Yeah. So practically iPhone, your, your mobile phone wants to authenticate, uh, the, the counterpart device, whether it's a charger, whether it's your, uh, any other physical accessory that is connected to, to your iPhone. Yeah. Your light pen, stylus, whatever that may be. It, it just wants to authenticate that device that this is a genuine apple or I, uh, uh, accessory and that's where uh, uh, this thing comes into picture yeah it, it would ask uh, device to device authentication and then enroll this kind of devices yeah <clears throat> else what is practically possible that actually most of the manufacturing never happens uh, in, in any other countries other than china and, 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 and if you actually for your logistic information have to share every information with your logistics supplier that this is where this is the microprocessor that, that they are using this is the the part they are using this is the software that you need to install and um, yeah you 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 put an order to 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 manufacture a billion devices and what stops that that particular company if it's so popular that you are manufacturing a billion devices what stops them to to make uh, two billion devices yeah because it's so popular and they will just clone it and because of this this secure devices there is no physical cloning possible i mean you only shipped them uh, a billion devices and the only company that can manufacture is, is an xp or the secure element providers like that yeah you produce that you you secure that and then all your devices are secure practically that way yeah, so this is the hardware base. So whatever we do in software, actually everything happens in, in, in this hardware like that. Yeah, uh, some of the use cases. Yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah. 
one of, of this part is uh, the device to de uh, device to server authentication yeah so the point is it's it's not just that that when the device wants to send some information to the cloud it needs to be secure the device is authenticating the server but the server is also authenticating the the device i mean he asks that what is the unique id he gives that this is my unique id which is available in the secure element and using the certificates that we we shared earlier whatever the the challenge that the server gives that that okay sign this information for me and then practically this guy has the private key the private key is inside the secure element the signing happens and the information gets uploaded uh, back to the server and, and both the devices can actually mutually authenticate the same thing uh, uh the server we can pass a challenge to the server and the server can can sign and the public key can be pre-installed on the secure element or securely injected into this device that we call trust provisioning like that yeah that kind of thing so this is for the device to device authentication the uh, the apple accessories use case that we talked that kind of thing yeah uh, uh yeah sorry this is server to server and similarly device to device can also happen yeah like that uh, yeah, there is one more use case, uh, the, the sensor use case that the data that is read from the server sensor, it is sent to this device. There is a key that is inside this IC. Nobody has the, the key. The key is not outside. Whatever data was read from the sensor actually can be whatever uh, the security that we talked about. If you want AES encryption, you want the macking, whatever happens, but it happens inside this device. You just want signing that, that gets signed here. And then data that comes to the host and the host sends it to the cloud. And, and that's how, uh, yeah, <clears throat> you know this. I mean, there's a good hack possible that, that uh, uh, imagine you have full automated system and you just have to send a message that there is a fire in your factory. If in a fully automated factory, if you are able to fake this message that there is a fire in the factory, it has to open all the gates so that employees can go out and that's it, right? The gates are open. Now you can go inside the factory and steal whatever information that you want. So, so even that information that what is uh, whether there is a real fire into the system and uh, since the information that that message that there is a fire or whatever the temperature that information is not signed, it, it's not a valid message. So, so that's how security can be built into this kind of devices. Yeah, like that. Yeah, the same thing what we discussed about the Wi-Fi. Practically, we can also secure the Wi-Fi and there are other use cases into this secure elements like that. Yeah, that way. I mean, yeah, we are running uh, close to it. I mean, um, uh, as, as, as as my team, we, we make it quite simple. I mean, uh, yeah, we, we provide a configuration file. We provide some DLL. So what we are telling you is that open SSL configuration is equal to yeah, we, we set an environment variable that pick up this configuration file and we start up on SSL. And then we just want to draw some random numbers. So practically now <clears throat> these random numbers are being drawn from, yeah, uh, this secure element. And in cryptography, random numbers are also quite important. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, like that. So, yeah, I mean, the same way this uh, random numbers got uh, drawn here, you can actually use the secure element for signing verification and all those things yeah that kind of thing uh, yeah like that yeah like that so i have further reading so you can go through these urls and then 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 go through the details like that yeah that way and uh, yeah i mean at least you can go to the product page yeah there's a documentation also for all this product and all those things yeah <clears throat> i think we are close to uh, yeah, three minutes left uh, before 5 p.m. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, I had to rush through the the last few sections, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, yeah, we are open to to questions now. Yeah, yeah, good. Hello, student. You can uh, now just ask the question. Anybody has any doubt, just unmute yourself and just ask the question. Or uh, you can uh, write your question in the chat window also. Professor has a wide knowledge in this area, practical purpose. Uh, so, hello, sir. I am Bhashit. Mm -hmm. 
yes bhai uh, tell me i wanted to know that uh, if there are any security standards that are implemented for the uh, product which you have uh, you know uh, come across also you can be little uh, you know general that what are the security standards that uh, usually some iot devices has to you know or if they can implement some sort of uh, standards so yeah. i wanted to know about this yeah so so there are yeah as you can see these are the algorithms aes des triple des rc4 cha cha poly rscc these are all algorithms so uh, the consensus in security community is that that you should keep the algorithm public okay but the the keys the the, the key material yeah the, the random numbers the, the symmetric key keep that secure but not the algorithm so that you can implement and you can have different implementations example what i say that uh, avoid the side channel attacks or avoid uh, b- 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 other kind of vulnerabilities example the des has this vulnerability that using uh, uh, this uh, uh, yeah fpgr as you can you can block this so one part is this algorithms and and actually the algorithms is is would be just just a, a research paper that the, how these algorithms has to be implemented i mean how these algorithms actually works uh, but the example rsa would use uh, uh, yeah exponents or prime numbers like that uh, then uh, ecc is is going to use uh, the curves and then the polynomials of the curves yeah this this is the algorithm parts on the counterpart there are entities that that certify these algorithms or this implementation so so there is a fips yeah that that's comes from usa yeah the, the fips certification so that's how you you don't actually as i gave you that example of mask right just because you are using a mask does not mean that that you are secure the same way just because you are using ecc or rsa or aes does not mean that your implementation is secure and for that Uh, there are companies that certify your devices yeah there is a common criteria certification which which gives a formal methodology of 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 uh, the security algorithms so so there are uh, yeah this this aspect so there is common criteria that you can look up to fips that you can look up to yeah this actually certify your end to end implementation of that, that 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 algorithm that security yeah like that So, example, uh, RSA has something called CRT algorithm. Yeah, using CRT actually on embedded devices, it. I mean, to generate an RSA key on your device, it takes uh, embedded device takes around four to five minutes. I mean, it, it's 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 a huge operation just to generate one key. Yeah, uh, and IoT device cannot cannot stay away. Uh, if it's a battery operated devices, you cannot afford to do that. Yeah. So then there is something called CRT. uh i forgot the full form it's chinese uh, reduction uh, truncation or something like that yeah but y- you can use that and then you can reduce the, the time it takes but then the problem is it's 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 vulnerable yeah and then if you are using crt then you actually have to 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 change this part uh, 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 how, how actually you have to to uh, knock off some of the, the the keys that that got generated using that crt algorithm the same thing is that rsa 512 is of of no use yeah it can quickly be be hacked uh, you have to use rsa 4k uh, at least or 2k minimum that kind of thing so when you are fips compliant they will actually see that if you are using rsa what internally you are using yeah the same thing is common criteria that that uh, you have to prove that that if you think that your system is secure why it is secure why you feel that it is secure and then you have to justify all the points that that uh, the internal documentation only limited team has an access if there is a vulnerability in a part of that api it is evidently documented that other engineers who are using this part has an access example um yeah if 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 your ecc uh, has some vulnerability in your implementation what workarounds do you have in your system to to actually compensate for that compensate for those limitations like that yeah that way but what good question thanks yeah uh sir but actually like uh i wanted to know that if there are any certain uh security uh standards just like for appsec we have uh, oasp and nist and ossstmm is there any certain body or any uh specific methodology which is used in iot i mean it it's 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 a it's a diverse algorithm yeah it is sorry not algorithm it's a diverse landscape yeah example 
uh, what what market you want to put everybody wants to put their own on 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 face there yeah example mm-hmm. arm is coming with with their own standardization uh, okay. apple is coming with their own standardization for chip uh, consortium so it's it's just depends on which market you want to focus on yeah and, and everybody automotive have their own standards for all these things so everybody comes up there comes up with their own standards so so you cannot say that i mean uh, in, in china also that they have their own algorithms mm-hmm. it's oscar that kind of thing oscar certification that kind of thing so uh, i mean in a sense you cannot generalize that that since i'm using this i'm certified you definitely would not meet the next market yeah that, okay okay yeah but that example uh, european union is coming up with a con- convention that if there is an iot device you need to have a mechanism to upgrade the firmware without that they, they don't want to allow the iot devices to be rolled out uh, with with the, the firmware because you want to put your iot devices for years and years together and then what upgrade you are happening has to be an authenticated upgrade so that people cannot hack into those devices and then put a malicious firmware into that devices that kind of thing so so uh, yeah it's 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 still too soon to to see that i mean it's other way around that there is no no convergent uh, thing you have to to look at which market you want to sell your product in whether it's for government organization or whether this is for uh, industrial like that yeah uh, there is an opc ua open uh, uh, platform consortium yeah opc ua unified automation uh, that's for iot devices authentication there so you have to look at market that that you are targeting like that yeah okay. all right okay sir okay sure uh hello sir mm-hmm. now we just move to the uh, photography so one of you request him on your video okay i will do that to start your video and uh, uh, just for that uh, sir you have to stop the uh, sharing uh so we can take the entire uh, you know group photo there yes uh i requested to all the participants that uh, please turn on your camera for few uh, minutes so we can have the glimpse of this meeting yes jay uh, darshil akshar pratham i request to all uh, abel so please turn on your camera so we can take a snapshot for the today's uh, webinar just one more minute guys okay thank you thank you so much okay thank you kunal sir for sparing your valuable time for us instant uh, thank you sir thank you all the joining participants okay. so now uh, we may leave this session thank you sir bye sir okay thank you